Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Unplug the Fax Machine. And as we think, uh, unplugging the fax machine is probably a, a safer and much gentler alternative uh, than what the folks here uh, from the movie office space were suggesting, which is to uh, beat up office uh, equipment. Unplugging the fax machine is our topic today. As we begin, you will have the opportunity to enter your questions into the Q&A window that you see at the bottom of the screen. And depending on our time, we'll address as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. My name's Tim Dubes. I'm a marketing manager here at J2. And as I said, our topic today is going to be unplugging the fax machine. And, and as we talk about that, I'm going to look over the last 12 months. And it frankly has been a pretty tough 12 months for fax machines. I'm going to discuss the top three news stories as they relate to fax machines. The first one, uh, and this is a fellow who used to play for the Denver Broncos in the NFL. His name is Elvis Dummerville. And Dummerville's a pretty good defensive end. And he was um, scheduled to make $12 million uh, in 12, uh, 2013. And unfortunately, Denver signed this quarterback named Peyton Manning. They needed to adjust some revenue numbers and revenue streams, and they offered Elvis the sum of $8 million, which they went back and forth on. And there was a deadline. The deadline was 1 p.m. And 1 p.m., Elvis either had to accept this $8 million contract or the contract would be gone. Well, they went back and forth. Elvis decided to accept the contract, tells his agent, great, signs it fax it on over to the Denver Broncos. Well, apparently, uh, his age, Elvis's agent uh, had a problem with the fax machine. Um, he said it just didn't work. And while he was scrambling around finding a fax machine that would work, it took till about 1.25 uh, to get there. Well, the problem is for Denver is if they didn't receive that contract and register it by 1 p.m., they were going to have to pay Elvis $12 million. They didn't want to do it, so instead they just cut Elvis. Elvis is out $8 million. Now, let's not worry too much about Elvis. He landed on his feet and got a similar contract uh, with the Baltimore Ravens, and they actually won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. So everything worked out just fine for him, not so good for his agent. He lost his job. So that's fact story number three. Uh, facts fax machines in the news again. Uh, number two story, uh, there's a business owner. It's uh, a guy named Doug Wahlberg. He works up in Minnesota for Mariposa Publishing. And Doug got sued for uh, $48 million in a class action lawsuit based on fax advertisements. Uh, it's kind of concern for Doug because he was being sued uh, by an attorney. And this attorney's name was Michael Knack. And basically, uh, Wahlberg says, hey, he, he agreed to receive these faxes, but uh, the attorney said, wait a minute, there's no opt-out on here. And, and this is an FCC rule that just like emails, faxes have to have an opt-out clause in it. And uh, while Mariposa Publishing said, well, wait, he asked to receive these faxes, so it seems kind of strange. But there you are. They face potential fines between $16 million and $48 million, which is a relatively high price because the publisher only does about a million dollars in sales annually. That's how fax machines make the news. And, of course, the number one story, and this comes from last December, uh, Kim Jong-un, uh, sends a fax threat to South Korea. So basically, um, he said to South Korea that um, without any notice, we are going to attack you, which is kind of strange because I would take the fax to mean that it, that was a notice. Uh, the problem is, I guess, in South Korea, in Seoul, South Korea, on the anniversary of Kim Jong, Kim Jong Un's father's death. Um, there was some protests there that uh, there was burning and effigies and things like that. So here you are um, with a threat using a fax machine to say that they would mercilessly attack without notice. And then when they sent the fax back from the South that there would be resolute punishment for such action, uh, we had our first fax war in a, in a long, long time. So that's fax machines in the news over the last 12 months. So what about you? What, what do you think of when I say fax machine? What comes to mind? Well, it may be that it's 
just a necessary evil for your real estate office. You know, you have to deal with taxes. You're, you're putting out offers for properties. Um, there's counter offers to sign. There's legal documents involved. Um, so you have to have this fax machine. Well, it kind of seems strange in this age of multifunction devices that you have this dedicated unit asking fax machine. Uh, but a lot of real estate offices have that fax machine sitting right next to uh, the departmental printer, the mul departmental multifunction device. Or your reaction may be, hey, I still have to use one of those. You know, uh, to technology elites, sending a fax somehow seems arcane. And I'm sure you have heard it from your clients, uh, maybe um, your family members when you discuss this, um, that, ah, geez, why do I have to do that? Why do I have to send a fax to do something? Well, if you're going to rent an apartment or buy a house or conduct some other financial transaction that requires a signature, that's when you need a fax machine. So the same people who are asking those questions or might give you a chuckle about faxing, they're off to find the nearest fax machine when they would need to do that financial transaction. So the reaction may be, why do I still have to use this fax machine? Haven't you ever heard of email, and can't I just use email? You know, it's a valid question. However, um, you know, with email, you have other issues on there, and we're going to address those in a little bit. So why can't you just uh, scan in a document and send it by email? Well, there's issues involved with that. So the discussion, though, probably gets summed up best by Michael Scott of the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company, if you remember this on uh, television. His question, when it was suggested that he faxes, is, fax, why don't you just send it over via dinosaur? Okay, so fax machines are clearly suffering from a lack of respect. And I'm not here uh, to defend the fax machine. Uh, probably wouldn't title our webinar, I'll pull the plug on the fax machine if I was. Um, but the question remains for your real estate office, why do you still have fax machines? Well, there's probably a lot of good reasons for it. You know, when a document needs a signature, we think of it still being paper-based and signatures being paper-based, um, there may be requirements either from the vendors that you work with, whether it's the banks, uh, mortgage originators, uh, whether it's government entities that demand that you have this document that is paper-based and signed. Uh, so there are these ideas of regulatory compliance. You may need written proof that you sent it. If you send somebody an email with an offer on it, that's great. But could you have altered the timestamp on that email? Um, it is not considered uh, a timestamp or an auditable record or, or proof of delivery on that. And the final reason could be just, you know, that's how we've always done it within our uh, agency. We've always sent faxes. It's what we're comfortable with. And these are all good reasons. It's probably why fax machines are still around. And, and believe it or not, this is a research study that was done by the NPD group. And it found that there were over 350,000 fax machines purchased in the United States um, in the last year. And this is added on to 17 million fax machines that are active in the U.S. right now. And this is all sorts of fax machines, from plain paper fax machines to the old thermographic fax machines. If you recall those or if you still have them, you know, at Staples or Office Depot, you can still go get those uh, round cylinders of thermographic paper to feed into your fax machines. They're still around and they're still in use. And yes, we are serious about that. Um, there's some drawbacks to fax machines. If you think about this, if you're sending and receiving um, um, an offer to purchase a property and you're waiting around for it, you may want to go down to your local Starbucks and you're waiting for that fax. Well, fax machines, um, despite this picture, are not really very mobile. You really can't take it with you. So if you're waiting for that important fax or you need to sign and fax something back immediately, you're kind of tethered to that office fax machine. You're going to just hover around that. 
Uh, you know, this idea of mobile fax kind of hits home, I think, for the real estate industry. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I was purchasing a home in Las Vegas, and, and it was a pretty competitive market. For those of you who are familiar with the Las Vegas real estate market, um, homes were going up nonstop, and there was wild bidding and action on that. And in fact, uh, to purchase the home, uh, my wife and I put in 11 different offers on different properties. And as you know, these are not just one offers and, and a single piece of paper being sent. These were multi-page documents with an offer. There were counter offers back and forth. And it was over a period of about three months. And over those three months, I was doing a lot of traveling for business. And as you know, with these offers, it's, it requires several signatures. It was the signature of my estate, real estate agent that was in Las Vegas. My wife was in Los Angeles, and I was somewhere around the country traveling. And so you can imagine what this was like. We were faxing. It was kind of like fax tag. Fax the document to one person. They would sign it. The other person would receive it. I would find a Kinko's or an Office Depot where I could receive that fax. I would take that, sign it, scan it back in, fax it back uh, to my agent. Um, it was pretty painful until we developed a different uh, method for that, and we'll talk a bit about it as we go on here. Okay. The other thing with faxing, and, and, it, and it relates to that same idea of mobility, is the idea of routing and sharing fax documents. You know, I gave you a very simple case there uh, that occurred to me where we're sending a fax between three parties, and ultimately there was a fourth party, the agent at the other end, and it was this idea that the document had to be routed very linearly. It was going from one person to the next, to the next, to the next. That's kind of been a problem with fax machines. There's this manual time-consuming process that when you, you sort of receive a fax, you make a copy, send it around to somebody else for approval or another signature, you have a paper workflow. This has always been viewed as a drawback, and, and, and rightfully so. And the other problem is security. We start to think about this. You know, okay, we gave you the example of Starbucks where, hey, we all need a cup of coffee, but if you're waiting for that fax and it's coming in and it's the offer on, the, on that property, um, you've got to make sure you're there. One, because you want to receive it quickly, and two, there's, there may be security issues. You know, your fax machine typically in the office may be in an unsecured area. You know, uh, in healthcare, this is a huge issue. There's um, HIPAA compliance issues and things like that. But for you in your office, this is a strictly business issue where if you want to see the security and our fax is secure, they certainly are, but only if you're the person who gets to the fax machine first. So if you're waiting to receive an important fax document, you may have to babysit that machine to make sure you get there before anybody else sees it. And this is just some of the drawbacks of the fax machine. Okay, and there's there's a lot. We've seen it, right? When you you got to send that 10-page offer, you got to sit there and watch and make sure the pages didn't stick together. And you hear that whir and burr. It's slow. And if the other line is busy, okay, we'll wait a couple of minutes and try again. We'll wait a couple of minutes and try again. Um, maybe their machine's out of paper. Maybe your machine's out of paper. Maybe there's a paper jam. A lot of issues with the mechanics of the fax machine, and and really this goes back to what I talked about in the beginning. Unitasker, this thing does nothing else. It does one thing. It's there to send faxes, to receive faxes. It is a fax machine. So again, begs the question: Why is this still in your office? Well, you know, I get it. We like paper. Paper feels good. It feels good to put pen to paper and sign a document. Um, there's a comfort level with this. There, there's a formality to it. Uh, it's also simple. Okay, When you have documents that require signatures, that are um, uh, transactional documents that rep represent a financial transaction, the simplest thing to do is to sign it by pen and fax it along. Um, the only nice thing about fax machines is right, they don't have blue screens. You know, it's not like sending an email where maybe the system's down, maybe it isn't. Um, if you've got a phone line connection, you're good. Um, and that's this idea with fax machines and why they're stuck around. It's this least common denominator. It's the simple solution. I can always sign it, can always fax it. I have a pen, I have a piece of paper, and I have a phone line. 
Well, you know, the world advances. You know, there's there's always these transactions and transitions away from older technology to new technology. Now we don't have to go all the way back to Stonehenge to view this. We can just look at it um, as sort of timestamps in our own area. When we look at you know phone lines and landlines themselves, okay, they've given way to mobile phones, and, and most of us have mobile phones, and we're doing voice over IP and things like that. Um, we move from answering machines. You know, we're familiar whether it was tape or digital based, and there's these ages of fax machines, to now where we have online voicemail. Transactions uh, just in creating materials from typewriters to word processors and touch pads. And if we go back a ways, we can all remember how we came online, right? AOL, you've got mail, you heard the buzzing at 14.4 BPS on your uh, dial-up modem. And now I think just about everybody has some sort of broadband Internet access in their office. So there are all these new technologies out there that are waiting to improve business processes, including sharing important documents. And that's the thing I want to get across here. You know, we're suggesting that you pull the plug on your fax machine. We are certainly not suggesting um, that you stop faxing, okay? Because you may hate the machine, but you shouldn't hate on the medium. Faxing is an idea of transmitting documents digitally. It's taking a, a document that's an, an analog representation, which is a piece of paper, and, and taking that and pixelating it and transmitting it on to somebody else. And fax technology is great. Uh, it's very flexible. Okay? You can fax from a computer, but you can't send email to a fax machine. Now, if that makes sense to you, it gets that least common denominator again. You can connect with anybody who has a fax machine or a computer when you have fax technology. Um, and then there's the security. Okay? When documents are transmitted over an analog line, they are inherently more secure than when you're sending email with viruses and, and, and the sort. Um, and think about that when we talk about secure document transmissions, and you'll see why faxing is still relevant. So what we're suggesting to you today is that there is an advanced solution for faxing and a better solution overall, and that's hosted fax services or fax services in the cloud. And this gives you a lot more control. It kind of combines some things. It allows you to eliminate that machine, unplug it. You don't have to bash it with the baseball bat. Um, but it also allows you to remove things like fax servers if you have a larger office. You can get rid of the phone lines and the expense associated with that. Um, and you're now able to fax entirely in the cloud. So we're going to talk about this, and then we're going to show you a bit on how you can do this with eFax Corporate. Uh, there's some very simple steps. In fact, we've broken it down into three steps that we'll see on how you can create a fax and send a fax just as easily as you would an email. You just create a new email, and you address it to the fax number you want to send it to, and then you put the tag on of at efaxsend.com. You attach any documents that, you know, the, the orders or the uh, purchase uh, offer, and you attach those documents. They may be in uh, uh, JPEG format. They may be in PDF format. There's a number of different formats we support on that. And then you hit Send. Okay, it's that simple. Uh, and then on the receiving end, instead of waiting by the fax machine for those offers to come in, they can come in directly into your email address. In fact, with most of the real estate offices that we work with, every agent has their own dedicated e-fax number. And so those, and that's going to have a one-to-one -one association uh, with their email address. And so the e when somebody faxes to that number, it's going to be sent as an attachment uh, into your email address, and you can have it, again, as a uh, TIFF or a PDF image, and then you have access to that document on your computer. Okay. This gives you an idea of, of really the overall environment of what we talk about faxing in the cloud and, and some of the options and opportunities that you have here. It's reliable, it's easy to use fax service, and you can do this from your desktop, you can do it from a laptop, you can do it from a smartphone. Um, and you can do all this without disrupting your current 
faxing capability um, or requiring your employees to start doing something else. There's not a lot of training uh, really involved with the, with this type of solution. Um, no hardware, no software. As I said, it, this is really a way of replacing um, that physical device as well as the phone line associated with it. Uh, you can have localized numbers. You can port over your existing number. It's really scalable. So as you add new agents or you have other employees um, that join your agency, you can easily add them on. There's security on these documents. There's several options of doing uh, transport layer security or doing uh, secure uh, messaging uh, with your eFax system. And it's up all the time, and you have 24-7 system support from this. So whether you have a single agent in an office or you're looking for uh, faxing from somebody who works from their home or to multiple users or in a distributed environment, you can all use eFax Corporate. So to kind of uh, wrap that up on, on that discussion, I look at um, uh, hosted fax services and specifically eFax as kind of a best of both worlds here of technologies we're now familiar with. Okay, why do we still fax? Because we need that audit trail. We need proof that we sent that fax, that that offer was sent um, to the other agent. Um, so you get that audit trail. With fax machines, you see that is a printout, right? So after you send the document, little uh, third of a page gives you a transmission receipt. Uh, with eFax Corporate and, and the hosted fax service, that's now uh, a report, a digital report that you have on there. You have the connectivity to fax machines, and you have this idea of being able to comply. So you can have physical signatures on documents and be sent there. But you combine this uh, with why we like email. You don't need to be doing paper workflow. This is now an electronic workflow. There's no waiting for busy signals or waiting for somebody else to use the fax machine. There's no phone lines involved in your office. Um, and you have this connectivity. So wherever you have Internet access, you have fax access. And that can be from your PC, can be from your tablet, can be from your smartphone. So you have that portability. So it really is the best of fax machines combined with the best of email. So that's a bit of background on it. I'm going to break away from the PowerPoint now and, and do a quick demo. Um, and it, as I said, not the most complex thing in the world here, but um, it's something that I, uh, I think it's easier to see. And just give me a moment. I'll switch over to my desktop. Hopefully you can see my desktop now. If you do, you're going to see a residential property management agreement. You know, I like doing demos and I like showing our technology to people, but I don't like it when it's sample document this and sample document of that. Um, I'll trust you all to review this. I, that property I bought in Las Vegas, just so you know, I wasn't kidding. I actually, uh, uh, we ended up buying that property. 11 offers and it went through. Um, lived out there for a while, um, and now I live in Los Angeles. Um, when I work with EFAX Corporate. We, we're actually headquartered in Hollywood. Uh, it's a long commute from Las Vegas, so we decided to rent out that property, and I hired a real good agency there um, to manage it for me. Of course, no good deed goes unpunished. They sent me a contract, so here it is. This is the contract, and you can see um, this is the typical thing that you may be familiar with, right? There's going to be signatures. There's going to be um, documents on here, places for me to initial and things like that. Uh, all of these areas um, I did uh, with eFax, and I'll show you how. But if, for example, um, in this document, there's several different ways of sending eFax. I, I mentioned email. You can also, from an application like this, this is in a PDF format, so I'm in Acrobat. I can just choose to print this, and with eFax, one of your drivers for printing, either I can send it to one of my printers, 
or I can send it via e-fax. And when I hit print, this 22-page document is going to call up uh, the e-fax interface. And I will show you that. Um, this is the e-fax messenger. So um, you can do all your faxing straight from applications. You can fax from browser-based, and, and we'll see that in a minute. Um, but you can also do it from this e-fax um, application called Messenger. And a lot of neat things that you can do uh, within Messenger. So if I go in here and I want to take a look at, let's see, another, uh, another real document. When you have properties, you have bills. And this is my water bill. Let's see, not too bad. Oh, I'm sorry, this is trash and garbage bill. So um, again, some types of documents that you have to see. You can see I have that signed on that document. Uh, very easy um, to do this when you're dealing with digital documents. So if the document starts out in paper, you know you can actually sign it, scan it in, and, and you're ready to e-fax it. But if you have, like me, with a lot of these documents are going to be digital documents, um, I keep a signature stamp. So I can go in there, and I have my Tim sign stamp, and I just choose it just like I would anywhere else um, with any other type of stamping of a document. So you, you can see that rubber st uh, stamp mode on there. And so I probably shouldn't sign it twice, but I did. The paid is also a stamp, but I can go in there. You can create um, your own individual stamps on there. You can use. Um, uh, the stamp library, uh, what have you. But I'm creating these, and then to send this, I select fax here. It's going to pull up the interface, and it's going to take that invoice that I just had in PDF format and treat it like an attachment to an email. And now I'm going to send this, and this is one of the real benefits of eFax. Okay, just like you in your email, you're used to having um, your address book of different contacts. You can have the same thing. Um, within eFax. So you can have a specific one. I'm going to, who should I send this? I'm going to send this to my friend Rob. Robert did a, a webinar with me the other day, which I appreciated. So I'm going to send him my trash bill. That seems like a fair exchange. So, um, but the benefit here, in addition to Rob, I could send this. Uh, for example, to the entire sales department. There may be incidents where you want to send uh, a contract of some sort to a group. Just like you would in an email, you can fax to a group now, and it isn't a case of sitting there and watching it whirl. If Rob's fax number is busy, I don't have to sit there and wait for it. Um, I'm going to send this to him. Rob will be surprised, but that's okay. Oh. Maybe he'll be really surprised. And it's going to transmit it. So, so you understand this document now is going to be pixelated. It's going to be sent on. Um, I know Rob has an eFax account, so it would come to him that way. Now I'm going to cancel that so he doesn't get my account. Um, he may be a little scared by that. Uh, but that's how simple it is to send uh, those types of documents with eFax. And then if I look in here, um, this is my Outlook box. And I can see in here, this is the type of message you're going to get. So in cases like this where I sent, um, in this case, I sent that. This was actually that uh, property management uh, fax. And this is telling me I did a successful transmission. So this is that report of the fax I sent. That was um, This time it was a 29-page. So I sent some other documentation along with that 22-page contract. Um, and then here is a fax that I received. And you can see this is how you receive it. Um, you're going to get a message here that says you've received a six-page fax. And that fax is going to be treated. The document's going to be an attachment in PDF format. You see you get the page there. So whatever the person sent, um, this was sent a little while ago. Ah, this is travel plans. I had. So you can see it, it's um, a fax document, and it's now um, sent to me in email format. So I'd like to make it a little more complex than that, um, but really, for individual faxing, sending and receiving faxing for agents, it is that simple. 
Uh, I do want to show you so that if you have an office, um, I want to give you a quick look at the administrator module. And again, this is a web-based solution um, so that you can have multiple phone lines, multiple agents, each with their own lines, and you can assign the different numbers. So in this uh, uh, eFax account that I have, um, I am the administrator of it, I'm proud to say. Um, got a number of people here. These are my financial advisors and California financial advisors and things like that. So you can group these people. You can assign them numbers. Um, we've got them uh, from Las Vegas on to most of Southern California and Southern United States. I've assigned 14 numbers out of a total of 24 I picked up, but this account allows me to have up to 100 numbers. And I can see who those people are in my group. Up, oh, I'm going to have to log on as an administrator here. Okay, and then we're going to look at here some of the user accounts. And I can see here's all the people that are in that uh, group of accounts. I can go in, and as the administrator, I can change rights to each of those people. I can change the numbers and, and different things like that. And also, very importantly, I can get usage reports, both as certain groups or individuals. I can see where billable pages are on you know, different report setups here, daily, weekly, monthly, on both the send usage as well as documents that were received by the group. All information, um, as I said, fairly straightforward, but allows you to manage um, a group in process here. So while the user interface is very simple and you can uh, create documents, send documents, receive documents all via an e email metaphor, um, the administrator has a lot of power as well uh, in managing multiple accounts together. Okay. Um, switch back to the presentation now. So, um, what's next? I hope that gives you a, a kind of a background. You know, it's hard in a, in a webinar format and in, in our limited time uh, to go into detail of it, but uh, we have a lot of information out there for you. Um, first. There is the opportunity, um, you'll have the, the recorded slides, so you'll both have a PDF version of these slides, and then we'll make a recorded version of this webinar available to you. Uh, also happy to say we've had some articles published on this topic and related topics on here. So um, within um, that uh, tab that you see on the bottom uh, with some of the different assets that we have available to you. Um, we have our article that we'll make available that is, um, is this the year you finally get rid of your fax machine? So get rid of it as you will. We suggest unplugging it, but you know, there is some catharsis in, in actually bashing up machines, and, and you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, we also have um, an article in there, Retire Your Fax Server and Head for the Cloud. This was in Mortgage Orb. Um, these were both online articles. Uh, Scotsman was also a printed article. And uh, then we have a white paper that is, is a bit more general. Uh, those two are more on mortgage origination and real estate. Um, this one is more general. Is cloud-based faxing right for you and gives you some of the issues that, that we discussed today in a bit more detail. And we're happy to provide that to you. And if any of you would like to try it out, you know, um, we do offer uh, trials of that. Um, and we have another white paper. This is a, a very straightforward one, which is just uh, a uh, very cleverly named a real fact solution for real estate. And I believe it's a one page that talks about some of the issues that are, are, are specific um, uh, to the real estate industry. And as I mentioned, it's something you can go to the eFacts website. Um, you know, you can try this out. We offer a 30-day free trial of eFacts, so you can get um, adjusted to this, incorporated with this. Uh, to note, that is for eFacts, not with the eFacts corporate account, where you can have uh, the multiple users and the administrative of it for your office. But I think it can be a good introduction to you, so I encourage you to do that. So with that, I want to thank you. Um, I, we do have time for questions, so we'll be sure to address some of those. Um, let's see. Uh, first one I have here is, can I keep the same phone slash fax number? 
Uh, I'm assuming uh, what you mean is that you have a fax machine now, and you've decided not to bash it, which is good. And you're using that. Um, great. I like that. Um, and you want to keep that fax number. You want to go um, into a uh, cloud-based solution. We encourage that. But you want to keep your fax number because you don't want all your customers and your clients to have, oh, no, I've got to remember a new number. And, and you've got to change business cards. I understand that. Uh, good news is, yeah, you can, you can definitely do that. It's called porting. And, and we have instructions on our, both our website, and we, our um, reps will be happy to walk you through that. But it's very common, and, and most people do want to include that. A lot of times, and, and we just brushed through it there um, in the demonstration of the administrator module, you can port over your numbers into there. You can also select from a list of new numbers um, that are local to your area. So you, you have both options. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, question is, in, in the example you demonstrated, uh, if Rob did not have an e-fax number but a regular fax number, could you send Rob a fax as well? Uh, that's a good question. I Sometimes I, I, I kind of go through a demonstration or showing this. I, I forget that. Uh, it's, it's that isolation that you have within here that we say, well, everybody has an e-fax number. Um, uh, to answer your question, absolutely. So it just so happens that most of the people that I work with, and, 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 um, and this applies to my family as well, they're all eFax users now, uh, have an eFax number. It's no different. So to send Rob uh, one, if he has a what we'll call a standard fax line, um, it's just I would enter in that nine-digit number that he has, or wait, three, four, five, six, 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 six. that's 10 digits. Nine digits going to get me nowhere. I enter in his 10-digit fax number along with at efax send. That's what's going to take that digitized image now and send it to the efax fax server. That is going to then convert it to analog and send it to his fax machine. So absolutely, it's, it's no different. In fact, even if it is an efax to efax, it's still going to go through a phone line transmission and send it as a fax. So you still get that audit. You still get the document sent that way. So uh, great question. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. We've got one more question here we can follow up on. Oh, the difference. What is the difference between eFax and eFax corporate? Uh, that's good. I kind of rushed through that. Um, but eFax is, is set for individual fax numbers. So if you want to have one fax uh, line and you want to be able to send and receive faxes from that from all the devices we talked about, it's a great application for that. Um, with eFax Corporate, where uh, you have the ability to manage multiple uh, fax lines together in one account. So within your real estate office, you may have 5, 10, 20 brokers. You can have one eFax account, and you can have multiple fax lines. As I said, it's typical uh, for everybody to have their own specific fax number. We think that's a great way. One, it helps with the individual agents and having their branding, um, and it stops that idea, right, of the fax machine of getting multiple offers, and everybody's at the fax machine, and you're having discussions. Don't, don't send a fax. I'm waiting for a fax. Um, you don't have to do that anymore. So uh, good question, but that's, that's the basic difference difference between eFax and eFax Corporate. Well, great. I think we're right about at 40 minutes, and, and I think that's longer than anybody should have to, to listen to a webinar. But certainly hope you found this information useful for you. Uh, again, I want to thank you for joining us today. You will have a, 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 rec a link to a recorded version of this webinar if you'd like that for reference. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to get a hold of us. You'll have that contact information both on the screen there, you can give us a call um, or uh, feel free to contact us as you'll get our information on that email. Thank you so much. Have a great day.